Before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to my followers over on Patreon. Lester Wilfred, Nell, Jam Val, Ollie Shell, Earl Patrick, Butch Batista, Cy, Angela Rose, Feline De La Cruz, Anthony Gomez, Aqueous Gem, Mikey Fortiza, Helen Fitzgerald, Melody Kofi, and Anton Bach. I cannot begin to thank you for all your support, and hopefully I'll continue to make content you'll want to support in the future. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I'm Topher. And for those of you who don't know and just randomly decided to click on my video, welcome to the channel. I'm Topher. Thank you for stopping by. So we're here to do a reaction, and it is to the one and only Miss Sarah Geronimo. Um, someone put down in the comments about a week, week and a half ago, and asked me to um, react to Sarah Geronimo singing a medley of I Put a Spell on You, Natural Woman, and I Have Nothing. Now... People have been saying that she is a genre slayer. You guys have been putting it down in my comments ever since I started reacting to her. And if anything shows that you are a genre slayer, it would be this medley. Because, like, holy cannoli, like, it's, these are some, like, the best vocals that you can get out of song. So I was excited. It, it sounds like a hard-ass melody and I'm just ready to see what she does with it. So we just gonna dive in and see Miss Sarah G. Rip 
Peter girl. sing the damn song sing the damn songs okay let's start from the top i put a spell on you what i loved i well i loved a lot of things first off this band this band gave me all the life from song to song to song it was just so good that guitar that came in transitioning into um natural woman oh and then there towards the end um from coming at going into that modulation or that key change for I Have Nothing, where they, they were just, <sighs> there's nothing like a good band that feeds off your energy and sets you up for just success. Because when you, when you and the band are on the same page, that it, it's just such a magical experience. And they were there to just elevate everything that she was doing. So they, they set her up for those moments and they, especially going into that modulation, like they set her up instead of just going straight into key change. Don't make me close one my door. Instead of just going straight into that, she, they, they, they let it linger. Don't make me 
except there's a lot more space in between there. But it's like those little pauses. It's just like it, it, like you expected her to go on, and it's like she's kind of just teasing you. And it's like, yes, give me more. Give me, give, give me what I'm waiting for. Give me this. Give me these vocals right now. And it's just, uh, band was phenomenal. But yes, her vocals. Back to. I put a spell on you. What I loved about this is because there's a lot of people, especially younger kids nowadays, even part of my generation and whatnot and younger, who think that the only version of this song is a version from Hocus Pocus by Bette Midler, which it's a fantastic version. I'm not going to lie. I've got nostalgia. It, it's got a special place in my heart. I love that song, but it's not the only version. There are so many different versions of this over the years. It was a song before Bette Midler did it. it. You know, you got Nina Simone and all kinds of jazz singers who sang it beforehand and all kinds of singers who sang it afterhand. So I love that the version musically that they did here was not the Bette Midler version, but rather one of the more jazzier interpretations. You know, throwback to kind of Nina Simone or even um, Annie Lennox, I believe she's got a version of the song too that's similarly or orchestrated so I, I love that aspect of it and her vocals on it were fantastic like she was just living in the song it was just all all, all these songs she was just kind of just living in them she was just mm, I, I don't know how to describe it but mm, they were so good and then natural woman serve me up these vocals like there are a lot of times where she, she her voice is like i haven't heard it yet in this particular light um it's it's there was a lot of soul happening um and a lot of like vocal choices with like her runs and whatnot and her ad libs that like they're not things that you can really teach like you can kind of sort of emulate them to a certain degree like I could listen to what she did and try to emulate it but there are people who can do that sort of almost she wasn't really scatting but those kind of ad libs th that she was doing and make it sound natural like she does and then there's people who can do it and not really sound natural doing it so like I, I love that aspect of it when it came time for um, I have nothing um I'm not sure if it's because she just got done slaying, you know, two um, incredibly difficult songs and whatnot, and she was at the end of this medley, um, but it felt... Her vocals were, her vocals were still good, um, her vocal choices were good, but when it came time, like during the verses, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful vocals. When it came time for the choruses, when... You know, I'm expecting all that big belty stuff. Like, she hit all the notes and all the notes were there. But, like, I felt like her voice wasn't quite full enough. Or, well, not necessarily that wasn't full enough. Like, it wasn't resonant enough for that song at the, during this performance. Um, had she sung it another time, she'd probably slay it out. You know, whatever. Slay the game. But... I feel like that particular song, like, it's just so iconic, and I've heard so many people sing it, and when it comes down to that, like, during the verse, you can do almost whatever you want. You can be as soft, as pretty, as floaty, and, you know, whatever you want, but when it comes time for that chorus, when that chorus kicks in, especially when it kicks into that modulation, that key change, after that second chorus, I need it to just be so, so full resonant and just powerful and it her voice on it just didn't resonate as much as i wanted it to during those choruses um but like i said her vocals were still good she hit all the notes one point she jumped up to some note during that that chorus that just it it, it took me back and i'm like yes queen you better slay uh, I think it was a stay in my arms. It might have been one of those. I don't remember. But yeah, there were there were parts of that song that were just magical, beautiful, stunning to listen to. And I mean, they like I said, they were all good to listen to. There was nothing about the performance that was bad. But for my personal taste, when it comes to I Have Nothing, 
it's such an iconic song that when it comes to that chorus, I need all the resonance in the world. And I wasn't getting all the resonance in the world from her vocals on that chorus part for that song. But everything else she did was fantastic. Everything she did during those choruses was fantastic too. I know y'all already start fighting tooth and nail in the comments and you know whatnot and like I said, I'm not dissing anything that she did. Everything she did was fantastic. Everything sounded fantastic. I just, for that song, I need more resonance during the chorus. That's all I'm saying. But she did phenomenal. And like I said, at the end, it's it could be that she was singing that at the end of this medley and having slayed these other two songs beforehand. So if she was just singing the song by, her, by itself, who knows? Maybe it would be exactly what I'm looking for, exactly what my ear wants to hear. But, you know, yes, yeah, what it is. So, I say my little piece. But she's fin she's phenomenal. Um, genre Slayer indeed, because I've, I've seen her cover rock songs thus far. I think I've seen her do a musical theater song at some point. And I'm seeing jazz and R&B and pop. So, it's like, you know, she goes all over the place. So, come on, Queen, go ahead with it. But I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, turn on notifications so you'll be notified when all my shenanigans get posted. If there's anything else you'd like me to react to, be sure to leave it down in the comments and I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. Um, if you would like to support the channel in other ways, you're more than welcome to join us over on Patreon. You don't have to, but you're more than welcome to if you want to. And don't forget to go over to the community tab on my channel here on YouTube and vote for May 2020's Artist of the Month. Um, you guys gave me the names of five amazing artists at the beginning of the month, and now you guys have to decide. It's kind of neck and neck between Moore Sonamon and Regina Velasquez at this point, but you guys will be the deciding factor, so go vote, 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 and we will see who the artist of the month is come the 23rd. Until then, I'll see you guys in my next video. Love ya. Before you guys go, a shout out to my amazing patrons, Lester Wilfred, Nell, Jam Val, Ollie Shell, Earl Patrick, Butch Batista, Cy, Angela Rose, Feline De La Cruz, Anthony Gomez, Aqueous Gem, Mikey Fortiza, Helen Fitzgerald, Melody Kofi, and Anton Bach. I can't begin to express how thankful I am for your support. And if you guys would like to join us over on Patreon, the link is down in the description. I love you guys. Hey guys, don't forget to check out the playlist on my channel for all of your favorite reaction videos. We've got playlists for Morris Edamon, Kelly Clarkson, Katrina Velarde, Tori Kelly, and more, so be sure to check them out.